Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. It is a beautiful morning. Light winds. We're heading out. I don't have it in me to sit at home. Got my good friend Justin with me. Just two of us today. We're going diving. Um, no real agenda other than get out and enjoy the day. Great weather. We are headed to the west. Let's rock and roll. Alright, we are on our first spot. Get warmed up a little bit. Been about a week and a half since I've been diving. Not much, just kind of hard bottom, a little bit of patchy rocks. Water looks alright. Let's hop in. Welcome back boys and girls. I am going to narrate some of these dives as I normally do. Uh, water was actually gorgeous this day. <coughs> and uh, contrary to popular belief, <coughs> excuse me, it is not always crystal clear in Key West. That's just what they show you on the postcards, but water was crystal clear. I hadn't been diving in some time, so just wanted to get out and have some fun, honestly. Um, pretty mellow on my drop here, just kind of scanning. This spot's normally good for a couple groupers. Not a whole lot of relief, um, but a lot of times these, you know, pretty subtle spots hold quite a bit of fish. You can see quite a bit of life there. There's a mangrove snapper I have in mind. I start to line up, and unfortunately for his friend, he presents himself. He kind of did a little hip fire shot there, and that fish was just so friendly. He made it pretty easy. Um, and there's a technique of retrieving smaller fish that I, I kind of do here. I keep the line in one hand and pull it tight through the other when you string a fish like that. Um, doesn't make as big of a difference on a fish that you stone, but you'll see here later what I'm talking about. Handy little trick at subdu subduing fish that are going crazy. <clears throat> I always tell people the biggest reason sharks come and bother you is if you leave a fish dangling and hanging and struggling when it's still alive. Um, a dead fish that's completely still is not going to draw a shark. But did another little drop here. There's a little black grouper in this crack. If you look very carefully, you can kind of see him tuck in there. He was just a little too short. I uh, wasn't convinced on him. He was probably 23, 22 inches, something like that. <clears throat> Again, just scanning. A lot of mangrove snappers on this spot. Uh, still kind of summertime, so a lot of them are spawning. I'm super mellow. This one just swims right up to me. It just gives me a perfect shot. I mean, that's textbook. But some of these things were giant. For being on the Atlantic side, we get a lot of really, really big ones in the Gulf, but these were just huge for the, the Atlantic side, only in 40 feet of water. Always try to bleed everything, as I've said in the past. This is still the same spot, about two to three hundred feet across. Pretty skinny, but just some nice bottom. All kinds of bait here. Normally, there's some black groupers. Didn't see a whole lot. And general rule of thumb, like I said, that one was about 23 that I saw. There's no reason to take that fish. Generally, if you if you doubt it or you think it's met, might be too small, it probably is. So it's better off to just leave it. Kind of scanning again. Lots of snappers. I have a hard time not taking these mangroves. They're so delicious. So I didn't get the stone shot on this one, and this is what I'm talking about on retrieving that fish. A smaller fish that you can actually handle. You kind of leave that line in your hand and just 
pin him up against the shaft or if he's on the shaft obviously just reach towards the shaft but a lot of times those fish the shaft will go all the way through them it'll be on the line it's a little harder to get your hands on <clears throat> let my gun go just kind of keep that line clear of me And this is Justin doing a drop. Apparently that little bit of commotion from my snapper uh, caused the red grouper to come out of the hole, he said. I didn't I didn't actually see it. But he said it came out to look at him. Actually a really nice one too. So that is not a bad first spot. Look at the size of that banger. So we were here 15 minutes, did five dives, shot five fish. And a lot of times uh, the reason we are productive is because we cover a lot of ground. Not no reason to sit here and dawdle. Pulled some nice fish off it. Um, on to the next. Let's keep going. So we kept moving a little deeper, uh, hitting some rock piles a little farther from Key West than normal. Um, we had some decent weather, so I wanted to run a little bit and hit some some spots I don't dive very often. I haven't dove these spots, most of these spots, in several years. This just littered in life. There's all kinds of bait and life all over this. I actually saw a big dog snapper. The camera didn't pick it up, but it went up under this cave and I kind of lost sight of them. Knew there had to be a grouper here somewhere. There's just, these caves are too big not to hold at least one or two groupers. Just kind of scanning, being mellow. A lot of times your presence, just hanging out there will bring whatever it is out to check you out. And uh, on my way up here, I actually see a hogfish. <clears throat> you can see him right there in the middle of the screen. I don't see a whole lot of those. Of course, it was on my return trip. There's gotta be a big grouper there. This is the same drop, or same rock rather. Uh, I wanted to try and go back down and find that hogfish. We never see legal ones, uh, very rarely, unless we're diving deeper or we run you know, quite a ways from Key West. Lots and lots of 14, 15 inch hogfish out there. And I'm so focused on looking for this hogfish, I don't even see this black grouper right next to me. He kind of spooks off. Uh, he was about 25, 26 inches. This hog just kind of gives me the perfect shot. They're known for that. They're known for kind of just sitting there being mellow, easy targets. That's why a lot of people like shooting them. This was actually a nice one. You don't see a, a whole lot that size. <clears throat> I actually stoned him, so he kind of lost his colors there. It's a pretty crazy pattern. Doing all right. Not um, didn't plan on this being a commercial trip, so I'm not banking on sinking the boat. But got some good fish in there. Any day I get to shoot a legal hogfish is a happy day for me. We don't see a whole lot of these. Justin got a nice mutton, little black grouper. But uh, we're doing all right. Covering a lot of ground. First spot went really well. We hit two spots. I think only one fish we pulled off of them. And then a couple here and there. So not every spot's a banger. That's why we do well though, is we cover a lot of ground. Um, and I'm actually about to dive a spot that I haven't dove in probably five years, four or five years. About 50, 55 to the sand, but comes way up. The water is never clear here. I don't even care if I shoot a fish here. Like literally this spot is so cool just to dive, but 
I think the last time I was here was um, with the spearheads. I don't know if they make YouTubes anymore. I don't think they do, but I dove with them years and years ago. We dove this spot and pulled quite a big grouper off of it. But anyways, I'm rambling. I'm getting in the water. Water's never clear here. Let's check it out. So like I said, I haven't dove this spot in, God, it's gotta be at least five years. Um, I can't remember when we made that video. Maybe a little less than that, but <clears throat> it, it left such an imprint on my mind. I know exactly kind of where everything was. So I swam over, did the, went to the cave that I had in mind. There's a big giant cave on this spot. Um, and I did, you can barely see it if you pay attention and maybe rewind this. There's a group, a nice black grouper on top of that rock. And he kind of ducks down between this little island. And there's two things that are going to happen here. He's either going to come back over on this left side and be curious, or he's going to shoot into that cave. So I'm kind of just waiting to see what he's going to do. I'm creeping very slowly. Unfortunately for him, he just kind of sits there and rolls over on his side for me and gives me a, a perfect shot. Of course, he goes towards the cave. And I didn't realize how big this fish was until I started to fight it. So I'm kind of just wrapped up that line, let my gun get away from me so I'm not getting wrapped up with him. And I'm just giving everything I have kicking, trying to get this thing away from the rocks because you don't want that fish to get rocked up in there. <clears throat> Ended up being a really nice fish that I'm still stoked about. I told you I like this spot. <laughs> <laughs> He's bigger than I thought he was. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's the cave I was talking about. I ain't dove that cave in five years. This is a healthy fish. Man, that's the one I was looking for. It's a nice one. Like I said, I haven't dove this rock in probably, I think it's been four or five years. I'd have to go look, but last time we were here, Gavin pulled a 53 off of it. Literally the first drop I did. It's over 30. That's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Love it. Let's hop back in. I'm pretty sure I repeated myself about six times about how long it's been since I've dove this, but I jumped back in. I wanted to swim through this cave and kind of just show you the size of this cave. This this spot is so impressive. I mean, you could drive a car through this. Um, and I think that's why these groupers like it so much. There's just so, so many hiding spots, and luckily that fish happened to just be out, um, kind of chilling pretty mellow, but I just wanted to do a swim through and kind of show you how just impressive this spot is. These rocks are just giant. Really is cool just to, just to even swim through even if there wasn't a fish there. <laughs> so this is our last spot of the day. Not much, just kind of some thick, chunky bottom. A little bit of life, nothing too crazy. Let's hop in. So we moved out a little deeper. Me and Justin started to feel okay. Um, water got a little fuzzy towards the end of the day. The tide started pushing out. And I'm kind of just doing a drop here, real mellow. First impressions, a um, lot of life on the bottom. Kind of scanning around. And somehow, 
I miss a really nice grouper sitting right underneath me. I kind of saw this Kubera. You could, if you look to the left, there's a Kubera. The right, there's a grouper. And I saw him too late. And he was sitting right, right underneath me. And um, unfortunately, he had started to spook before I, I got a chance to line up on him. And I'm not going to show you every clip, but I chased this grouper around for about 30 minutes. I would land right on top of him, and he would just spook. He just wasn't having it. Um, he deserved to live, so I left him there. Not that I had a choice. I pissed that. Huh? I pissed that. I got 15-pound black. So another drop, same spot. Kind of tuck my head, pull my gun like I always do. I, I didn't really talk much about my diving technique in this one. I try to tuck my head if I can, but it's hard not to spot the bottom because after seeing that grouper and missing him, if I, if I would have been paying attention a little better, I probably could have kind of directed myself towards him, but then you kind of lose, you know, your technique there, your form on your dive. A lot of big mangroves. Hard to say no to these again. You can hear my watch beeping at me. It's pretty deep here. I think it's about 70. Kind of just comes up real mellow. This one freaks out. Don't want those to get wrapped up on the bottom. That causes a lot of unwanted attention. So did, did everything I could to get them up. And there's that technique I was talking about again. I have the line in one hand and pulling it with the other to try and pin that fish up against the shaft instead of trying to, to grab the fish. But that is all I got on this one. Stay tuned for uh, the commercial breakdown. We ended up selling these fish. So stay tuned if you like seeing that stuff. Well, I'd say we got plenty. Like I said, kind of just started out casual as just wanted to come out and have fun. Honestly, I hadn't been diving really, but um, we'll see once we get back. We might have enough to make doing the paperwork worthwhile for commercial. Pay for expenses probably. Nothing crazy, but I had a good time. Beautiful day. We'll see you back at the dock. So fish is at the market. Um, again, wasn't really hardcore commercial today, but it kind of turned into potentially a commercial trip. So we we had enough to pay for expenses. So decided to sell it. Market's right there. If you want fresh fish, Keys Fresh Seafood. Here's my slip right over here. How convenient is that? Love it. But I'll break this down, um, tell you guys what we burnt. And again, wasn't a serious trip, but I will share the information with you because I know you guys like it. I haven't done one of these in a while, so when I get those numbers, I'll get them back to you. Take it. Tuna, what are you doing? Tipsy. Alrighty, I've got a commercial breakdown for you. Uh, it's been some time since I've done one of these. Uh, uh, like I've said before, or recently, I haven't been doing a ton of commercial because I've been so busy with charters, fortunately. And I prefer to do charters because it's a lot less impact on the fishery. I have to take a lot less fish to uh, pay the bills. Um, but yeah, here we go. Oh, and another friendly reminder, if you haven't seen already, Mondays, 6 p.m., new episodes. I'm going to do it weekly at least. Um, so keep an eye out, Monday, 6 p.m., new episodes coming at you. <clears throat> but we went out, I've said this again, repeating myself, that's kind of my specialty, Went out kind of mellow, just really went out to enjoy the day and have fun. I haven't been doing a ton of diving. I've been working a lot. So um, went out for fun, kind of turned into commercial because we had quite a bit of fish, more than we needed to eat for ourselves, um, which is a good problem. So we ended up selling them. Uh, and here's what we ended up with. Uh, we had nine pounds of red grouper, nine pounds of mutton, 25 of mangrove, 17 yellow jack. Uh, four pounds of hogfish and 44 pounds of black grouper. Total sale just shy of $500. Um, I think our expenses were just shy of 250. So daily profit. Um, if this is your first time watching this, um, go back and watch some of my older episodes. I explained a little more in depth, but daily profit was about 250 bucks. So not bad. Went out kind of to have fun and made a couple bucks. 
Uh, it doesn't go straight in the bank account, but you know it does go towards the business and uh, helps keep everything running smoothly. But um, that's all I got on this one. Uh, keep the comments coming. Hit the like button. That helps a ton uh, more than you know. And um, send me some more ideas. I do appreciate your guys' time, and thanks so much for watching. I uh, appreciate all the love, and I will see you guys on the next one. Later.